14 podcast, and folks, I can taste it on my tongue. Magic number down to two. We are close, closer than we've ever been, to playoff baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays. A little bit of a weird series. Avery, you're in Kansas, buddy. How you doing, man? You're an hour behind. Yeah, dude, being back central time fucking rocks. It's so good. It does, doesn't it? Like, I woke up from a nap, and it was 6.15. I was no way the game's on already. Just the best ever. But um, I have some gripes. Chicago Airport's the worst airport to ever exist. Which which one? Chicago. No, that's the best. What? O'Hare? You don't like O'Hare? No, it's a shit airport. Why? Is it too big? Too too big, too busy. Uh, yeah, it's no good. Really? I, I'm an O'Hare guy. I'm an O'Hare truther. But I'm like, horny for O'Hare. Would you always connect through there to get home? Yeah, I used to always fly to there. I See, thought I, it was like I liked, the food, I liked the when I decided there. to go. I would go Minnesota, then home to Toronto. I like. I did Minnesota, that once. Minnesota's airport, I I think is very nice. I did that once. Um, O'Hare is like uh, the food recommendations there are incredible. Underrated airport is Charlotte. I don't know if you've been there. No, but that airport goes fucking nuts. I'm pretty sure they it's a- like. It might be a hub for somewhere too. I'm not sure. They have like two Chick Fil A's there. It just it goes fucking crazy. They have two the, in one air. The which that one airport. and the Texas one, the the Fort Worth, I believe. DFW. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an airport cool. guy. We might. I mean, the more the more we start getting paid for Gate 14, we might have to just become airport guys. Do airport yeah, reviews. I I love planes too. I don't know anything about them, but I'm just fascinated Me neither. by them. Me neither. I as don't. well. And I. Just United flight just got down to Chicago. I had to walk 25 minutes from gate to gate, and I was the last person on the plane to get here, but we made No. It. Are you serious? It wasn't too late, though. That's always the worst. I, there's nothing worse than being the last guy to show up to, like, kind of like a boy's trip. Like, they're all just fired up, and you're just you're holding them back while they're waiting for you. It's the worst. Yeah, it's the worst. Old... How did the suit make it? Did you fold the suit properly in the thing or what? Yeah, my old man did that. Uh, okay, I'd been bu- I'd been busy, and I was like, he's like, this is the only way it's gonna get done without you ruining it because you got to fold it up right and then just carry yeah. on. Yeah, had to take it out as soon as I got here. I think the suit's gonna make it though, and you love to, to see that. Shout right, out to is, your mom is, for the suit. Is darts gonna make a uh, appearance? Oh, if you <laughs> so we. Uh... <laughs> So Dart my, Avery. my my friend from Japan who flew in for this $3,000 yeah. worth of flights to get here, be here for a week too, which is crazy. He spent $3,000. Yeah. To get here just on flights. Oh my God. And so the guy who's getting married, they went to the venue today and they checked it out. And I got a text saying, uh, there's a perfect patio to smoke darts on. Um, that's all. Oh. I got. So, uh, if, yeah, if you don't think I'm getting a pack of Marlboro reds for that night, you're crazy. Yeah, the Avery the Avery dart pick's gonna hit like crack when the Jays clinch. My I listen. Mom, my mom hates that picture so much that I'm just my, gonna keep doing it. My mom does too, and I won't reveal what my mom's Twitter is, but she responds to a lot of the tweets uh, <laughs> saying stop that. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's it's all time. And tomorrow I'll be at the game, which is sick because if Jays if Mariners lose tonight and Jays win tomorrow, I'll be at uh if, if mariners lose tonight and jays win tomorrow jays are automatically in so i'll be uh, do you think you'll get in the clubhouse for a celebration no no no. i'm sure to text them after see what they're saying after <laughs> um i'll you'll yeah i mean i'll definitely come on you know i'll text them after um but yeah listen man i mean this is although the week sucked one and two against the yankees after the first two games you were dead in the water that was a good bounce back game i'll be honest with you man and all what do we say on this podcast we just want to play off baseball okay that's all we fucking want. We're not going to get greedy. We're not going to say World Series or bust. We well, we did say that last episode. Did we? We we planned the. Parade. But that well, sarcastically though. What I'm saying is now is is just give just get me to the dance. Just get me to the World Series. I don't get or not the World Series. Fuck the playoffs. All right. Just let me pop bottles and celebrate. Let me get in there. Let me go after it. Okay. And I'll be there tomorrow. No Friday beer stream. And then Saturday, I'll be doing something for Sports Interaction outside of uh, the Rogers Center interviewing people. So if you're at the game, come say what's up. Um, but, man, we're, we're we're like, we could taste it, Avery. That tweet, our tweet that the Blue Jays have clinched is going to hit like crack oh, cocaine. It is going to hit like crack cocaine. I'm going to have to take myself outside of the bar tomorrow night for a couple minutes to just start posting 
stuff on Instagram. Just start ripping. No, you got a shotgun with a dart. Like you got to go. These videos got to go crazy. Because I mean, listen, we get, we're going to get to post the Jays clinch the playoffs once a year. We don't know when we're going to be able to do it again. So yeah. it's maybe gonna, I'll go. Let, if the Jays clinch, I'll do a five dart picture. Five lit. Oh dart my god. <laughs> I'll I'll do a three. Okay. I'll do three darts in the mouth. Me alto three darts. Or no, I'll wait. How many for how many series will they have to win to win the World Series? Wild card, division series, championship series, worlds. Four. Four darts. I'll <laughs> Holy do four shit. Four darts, one down. And every series we win, it'll Okay. Go. A dart a series. Yeah. I respect that. I respect that. Listen. I'm pumped, Avery. I really am, man. I listen, I know the Rays have nothing to play for. So this did weekend. you J- Johnny, let's talk. Did you was there any point in the last two days where you thought the playoffs might not? No, I never said that. And every single TikTok I made, I said they're still going to make the playoffs. I made that very clear. Um, did, would I have liked them to do it a little bit earlier than fucking three <laughs> games left of the season? Sure. But uh, I actually spin zone that to Luplo. So I was texting Luplo and I was like, fuck, yeah, you guys clinched or whatever. Uh He's I was like, must suck. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I would hate if the Jays clinched early because then we our content would suck for the next two weeks because we know we're in the playoffs. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> like, what are you saying? And I was like, yeah, I guess that doesn't make sense really <laughs> if you look back on it. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, the Rays have really nothing to play for. Congrats to the Orioles on clinching their first AL East title and God knows how long it's been. I can't even tell you the last time they did that. Um they did it. So the Rays have nothing to play for. I'm assuming they're going to rest some guys. Jays win tomorrow. It, we're going to see some bullpen games coming up here. It's not going to be. It's it's not going to be. Uh, not going to be pretty. I'll be honest with you. Some of the pitching staff decisions they're going to be going with. Maybe a little Jay Jackson three innings. Trevor Richards, who's been absolutely fucking dog shit. <laughs> uh, that ball he gave up to Judge yesterday. I don't think that's landed yet. Actually, so it might as well have just been off the fucking uh, off the hotel in left field. That's how far that went. Yeah. But um, it's going to be tough. And like I said, the next stream I'll be doing will be during the playoffs. So me and Avery will be there. We're missing work for it. Half day. Turtle owner's box. Are uh, we gonna, do we know what time? I guess we had no idea what time they'd play. It, it, I'm pretty sure it'll be at one. They'll be the early shit. Yeah. Is your mic working, Avery? It's on, brother. It's on? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to crank up your volumes then on the podcast when I edit it tonight. I, uh, I mean, why wouldn't you tell me before that you thought the volume was low? No, it, it, it did, maybe it's my headphones. Sorry, my headphone's broken. It might be that. I'm not sure, but I'll figure it out on the podcast. That's just something. We're just working through a little kink here, chat. <laughs> it's, it's the, <laughs> we're getting prepared for the rest of the postseason as well here, man. But uh, Avery, dude, it's like, what realistically, what do you think this team could do? Because the offense showed what this offense is supposed to do tonight. I mean, Varsho, yeah. Belt, Chapman home runs, all the bottom of the order guys pretty much showed up. Bubble Biggio, RBI single, legacy, of course, after a Boba Shett stolen base. What is your realistic, like, what would be the cherry on the top for you? I'm not going to say World Series, obviously. I'm not going to say this team's in a World Series. Just win a fucking series. That's all I want. Let's not get crazy here. But you said expectations. Like, if they don't win a series, it's a they underperformed greatly. Yeah. So this is like a championship series team, I think. Okay. Like, probably the underdog going into uh if they win a series again and they have to play the O's, right? They're probably the dog. But I guess they haven't played that great against the O's at all. But like they they should be able to beat them as well. I don't think they can this team hasn't been good enough to, for me, me to think that they run the table and win the World Series. There's, but the Phillies weren't good enough light, light, like that last sure, year. Sure, no, exact. Like, we've been begging for a really disappointing regular season to the most overperforming postseason. Which is what baseball is realistically. Like, that's what ball is, right? Yeah, like, like, let that be us one time. Let's Let's have a Mickey Mouse record get in. And then fucking figure it out in the playoffs. Yeah, I wouldn't say no to that. I wouldn't, but got to get there first. Magic number down two. I couldn't be praying more on the Mariners' downfall. If the Mariners lose tonight, the Jays' uh, playoff probability is ninety nine point six percent. Is that good? Chat. Is that good? Is that good? But I mean, the streams have been electric. By the way, shout out to everyone that showed up. It was my flu game yesterday. I was unbelievably sick. 
I'm, uh, I'm starting to, to feel that. that way right now. I just, I felt terrible. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't great. But um, to go back on that, Avery, to go back to the wedding thing, are you, are you going to try to get that dual citizenship? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I start I, shooting I told, shots. So my buddy Blake's the one getting married, and I said, yeah, I'm going to, like, it would suck if I fell in love this weekend, right? <laughs> and it's like, it would give me a good reason to come back here, come see the guys a couple of times. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely try and fall in love. The The venue they're at is downtown. Um, really? So, so it's church wedding. Like, you come to America, everyone here, way more religious, right? So yeah. the only other weddings I've been to, not church weddings, so they don't have full mass or whatever, but we're going to do full mass on Saturday. And then yeah. we're, me and my buddy from Japan got on the party bus to go from there to the venue. And then once the night's over, we're downtown where all the bars are at. So, oh my God. So if we, we swing and miss at the, at the little reception after we just go straight to the bars and try and fuck. Yes. Eh? Try and swing again. I would kill to be there. I would. That sounds absolutely <laughs> fucking incredible. Avery. <laughs> yeah. That sounds absolutely I, incredible. So Weddings it's, rock. It's nine Weddings o'clock. Rock. It's nine o'clock right now. Uh, my, our buddy flew in from Phoenix. He just got in and our other buddies flying in from Vegas and he's, we're going to go out downtown after this tonight too. So just get all the boys together. And it's just reminiscing on stories of us being shitty baseball team and like hating our coach and all the shitty things we did together. Like the best God stories damn. to tell. Yeah. That's see that. I miss that, man. I get to do that. Obviously all of my friends uh, are from Vegas. Obviously, like I said, like chase and Keanu and Dave and all those guys. So I, I had to get to get, I get to visit all of them at once, which is awesome. Cause they all live together. Like yeah. all near, near and, each other. And it so sucks that we had to take one of our buddies getting married to finally get back together. But that's For sure. what happens when you live in different countries. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. But uh, let's go to the series. Break down the series, man. I mean, obviously, listen, we'll keep this episode short because we're going to obviously start doing. Um, we're going to have a big one on Sunday. We're going to have a very big one on Sunday because there's an off day Monday and the playoffs start Tuesday. So we'll have a very big one on Sunday. But um, so let, let, let's break it down. Um, there's I, I really don't want to break it down. There's not really much to talk about. They scored zero runs in two games. But I will say this, though, man, Kevin Gossman has to be sick to his stomach. I mean, seven innings, three hits, five punchies, albeit, but just I he seven runs, seven innings, zero runs, and he got a no decision. Like, what the fuck? I'm gonna go. What's, I'm gonna go through. Uh, maybe on the plane ride home, just go through some of the worst, worst games the Blue Jays had for Kevin Gosman. I think and tweet it out. Like, just go through some of his box scores, look at some of the games, and just see how how disappointing the Jays were in a bunch of Kevin Gosman starts because he realistically should have been in the Cy Young race for longer than he was. Yeah. It sucks yeah, that he... Garrett Cole cemented his Cy Young win in Toronto. In front of Kevin Gosman's face. Literally in front of Kevin. Because if Garrett Cole had a little bit of a blow-up start there, then you could have started getting a little bit... You could have yeah, maybe... Like if, his, if his ERA got closer to three, except it, and then it just went down to two. It six. went to like two six. Yeah. It went to literally two six. After and that four, time. two six ERA, and then a whip under one. Uh, anyone Not ideal. A, anyone with a brain is going to vote for him to win. I'll win say it. I'll say it, Avery. I, 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 I love watching him pitch. I'll say He's, it. Man, if you gave him his beard back, he'd be one of my favorite players in baseball. I'll say it. Like I, I can't. Would you? I, would you give up? A Yankee won the Cy Younger MVP every single season, but they sucked. Yes, Me I too. would do that. I let yeah. them win every award as long as they sucked. Yep, I agree, Avery. Hit the nail on the head. I would. I love every single award. Yep. I, give me a Yankee MVP like a judge year last year, but he, they missed the playoffs. Give me that every single year. That's a good TikTok clip. Would you sacrifice a Yankee winning a major award, but they don't make the playoffs? W would you pick that? Yeah, I'm all in on that. Give me a Yankee play. Give me a Yankee guy have a fucking Barry Bonds esque season. They could but win they missed the playoffs. Volpe Rookie of the Year, Judge MVP, Cole Cy Young. They finish fourth in the AL East. Yeah, because they got Jake year. Bowers playing left. <laughs> they got the fucking the worst depth pieces ever. Shout out Hal, man. Hal really just figured that out. But I will say this, though. The funny part of the, those first two games I made it very, very enjoyable is watching Giancarlo Stanton play baseball. I mean, he is he is the worst 
baseball player I have ever seen. He just he's he's literally a 70 year old playing in the major leagues. He can't run, he can't field, and he can't hit. He's hitting 186. He's fucking dog shit. And it is awesome because they still have like five years left. And those yeah. idiots, uh, John Boy made a video, YouTube video this offseason saying that he's one of the best caught tracks left. Unbelievable. They're really, that video is very funny looking back on it now. Obviously, hindsight's 2020. They didn't yeah. think he'd be this bad. But is it something to be said about guys like Rowdy Telez? They, their bodies hold up longer? It's, I guess. The more uh, the more love you have on you, the more room for love you have on you, the better you are. You can't push hashtag, that. Uh, hashtag fat is beautiful. <laughs> like bald is beautiful. Rowdy Tellez has both. Doc, yes. Doc only has one. He's skinny. He's a skinny guy. Um, but where are we at with Romano, Avery? Uh, listen, I know he. you can throw me all those stats. This isn't going to be a Romano hate podcast, obviously. But in clo- either he's he's still hurt or injured or... He just can't pitch and tie games. You have, he can only pitch when the Jays have the lead. But like, where are you at with this? So we we've done this talk before. How is it different? It's it's just not. It's it's just what happens. It's like Which hitting is crazy with, though because he is so good. It's the exact same thing as hitting with runners in scoring position though. Like it shouldn't be different. You're ma- you're making good points, Dave. You're making right, good points. He comes into the game, same thing. He's not trying to give up runs. It's a tie game. Yeah. He gives up runs. The team's probably going to lose, just like that would happen if he's in a close uh, in a close situation and he gives up two runs. Same thing. Uh, I think it's just like a weird variance, obviously. And the numbers are completely skewed. And I don't know how big the sample size is at this point. Where It's just start- not good, though. I know, I know exactly. It's but so that's... predictable when he comes in in a tie game. It's crazy. And that's the why entire it's... Twitter timeline is like, this home run's going to hit like crack, and the judge just launches one oppo. It's crazy. No, that, was, that was the Austin Wells one, was it not? Oh, Austin Wells, sorry. Austin Wells, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I've confused my own brain onto what to think about that. I don't think it should be any different. I think you throw them all the time. It's like you use your best relievers when you need a zero, not when you need a save. Yeah, I guess. And, I, and people getting mad about at John Schneider for that. Like, dude, what what are you getting mad at Schneider? You throw your guy. Like, I know Jordan Hicks has been insane, by the way, which is Ross Atkins' master class. Yeah. Jordan Hicks has been absolutely fucking incredible. But Jordan Romano has earned that closing role. I mean, he's one of the best closers in baseball in the last two years. Leads the league. I mean, 75 or 87% save percentage I think he has this year. I don't know what it is. Something like that. But you got to throw your guys. And if you don't throw him, then it tells him in his mind, oh, this Katino doesn't trust me? What the fuck? And then he starts becoming a mental midget, right? So, I don't know. That's just, that's my mindset with that. It's like, are I don't you, know how you could. Are you in the boat of Hicks should be the closer no. in the playoffs? No. If it gets if it gets to the point where Romano puts base runners on, do not let him finish that inning. Like, let's say he gets it out and there's two guys on, bang, take him out. Don't even give him that chance, which sucks. But I don't know. Hicks has earned it just as much as Romano has. But Hicks is still that guy that's not really like strikeout heavy, and he walk like he's very wild. Doesn't know where his pitch is going, so he also is kind of like a question mark like that too in the back end of the bullpen, you know. So, but. You can't blame Romano for that game. I said this on TikTok. You blame the hitters for getting zero runs yes. against Michael King in the bullpen again, making Johnny Brito look like Cy Young. That's who you blame. You don't blame Romano. You blame the offense, all right? Let's make that very clear. But yeah. one thing that really pissed me off that game, Avery, maybe you're on the other side of this argument. So Vladdy's up at the plate. Um, It is a it is a 0-0 ball game, 3-2 count, bases loaded, right? And... If the count starts out 3-0, Vladdy gets back-to-back strikes and then watches strike three, which was borderline outside that the umpire was giving all day. I tweeted, Vladdy, what the fuck are you doing? Swing the bat. And I got roasted on Twitter by people. Is Am I taking crazy pills? It is a 3-2 count with two outs with a dog shit umpire behind you. You have to swing at anything borderline, especially with that umpire behind you. What do you mean uh, if this ball, this ball, that ball, this was a ball that... He is a dog shit umpire. You have to swing at that pitch. Am I taking crazy pills, Avery? No, it's so I'm, I don't fucking coach major league baseball, obviously. But when I coach the guys, like I do third base coach at Laureate, 
it's you look to your guys and be like, okay, you know, something bad is going to happen here. So you can't leave it in the hands of a guy who's consistently shit and then be surprised when he makes a bad call. Yes. That's all so, I'm trying to say. Yep. It's just like anything borderline, Vladdy. And by the way, he took two cock shot strikes before that. But it's like, so. Yeah. See, I, I make, I second guess myself way too often on this shit. But you'd have to think as a major league player, you know, the same zone every single time you take balls, what you think are balls and you, you go on, right? It's like, yeah. As if, like Brandon Belt takes that pitch every single time, never swings at that pitch. And yeah. maybe we think of it differently because Vladdy is more of a free swinger. Uh, think he would do more damage. But yeah, thinking about that, Brandon Belt, knowing the strike zone and his uh, plate discipline, would never, ever swing at that pitch. And we wouldn't get mad at Brandon Belt, probably. No, we wouldn't. Be- because he knows the strike zone better. It's just uh, not at all. It's a weird, it was a weird situation. That's all I'll say. It's just, no, but I, like, I, it does, what you're saying makes sense, right? It's not a stupid thing to say at all. If you have a bad umpire, his zone is expanded because he sucks. You got to swing yeah. at pitches that are borderline. I mean, that really wasn't fucking borderline, but uh, don't leave it up to a shit guy. Shit umpire behind the plate. For sure. For sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's all we can really say about that game, man. Uh, zero runs and then the Romano situation. Listen, I'm not going to be that guy that overreacts and says Romano, this Romano, that he's still the closer. Uh, but the next game. Another guy on the Yankees that I will show hashtag respect to with the two, Derek Jeter. Aaron Judge fucking rocks, and he is such a good guy. He yeah. is such a good guy. I This might be Yankee Johnny talking. Sorry for all those Jays fans out there. I know this is a Yankee podcast. He rocks. I mean, the guy hit 36 home runs this year, and he missed like half the season. Teacher man. <laughs> teacher man product. <laughs> he doesn't work with teacher man anymore. He... he he made that very clear. They don't work together anymore. But <laughs> Teacher Man did save him. Uh, people forget that. Maybe we need Luplo to go to Teacher Man. He just takes all the Fresno boys. Yeah, he, I, I think Luplo does know Teacher Man, or he might work for work with him still. I'm not sure. Teacher Man. The best part about Teacher Man is his fits. Like how how do you go into a guy who teaches some of the? I don't actually know if they're good tips for hitting, but obviously he helped Aaron Judge for a little bit. For a guy wearing the New Balance dad shoes and a tucked in polo to, to blue jeans, it's just yeah. an awesome fit for a guy who's the best. Seems to try to revolutionize the swing, the best, absolutely the best. But like I said, there was you're so really... you're so right about Aaron Judge though too. I wish he wasn't on the Yankees because he's a very cool player. He seems he's like an guy. awesome guy. And every single guy, like I'll give you a little story that not a lot of people know. So, uh. I think Bryson – so Bryson told me a story. Um, his first year in the league, obviously, Aaron Judge is a Mountain West guy, just like Bryson is. Bry- Bryson, I think it might have been last year or this year. Bryson was at second, or or Aaron Judge was at second. Bryson went to go to the bag, and a judge, Aaron Judge apparently was just like, Stoddy, what's up, brother? And Bryson's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, and then Aaron Judge like just followed him on Instagram, and now they're just boys now. That's so he, he just like, he even says that he's like, just like the mountain West guys stick together. And Aaron judge signed a ball for him after the game. I think cause Bryson collects these autographs from all these like big players. He plays, plays uh, against, um, he has a Wander Franco signature that I, that he threw out, I believe. But yeah, he, uh, he's just, uh, he said, Aaron judge is the best guy ever. And even Lupolo Lupolo even said it too. He's like, judge, he's the best. Like everyone has great things to say about him that I know that know him. So like I said, it sucks how good he is, and it sucks how good of a guy he is because you just want to hate him. You want him to be like A-Rod. You want to be like A-Rod where everyone universally hates him because he's on the Yankees and he's a piece of shit, but he's not. He's a great yeah. fucking guy. Yeah, Garrett Cole took that over at least. True. The kind True. of lo- the loser fuck on the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So game three, let's talk about today. Cause yesterday, like I said, congrats, Garrett Cole went to the side. Yeah, I'm not making the playoffs. Garrett Cole. I, I heard him say that he would, would actually choose uh, to win the side. I'm going to make the playoffs. So um, <laughs> congrats to Garrett Cole on that, but let's go into, I mean, today's game, today's game had potential to be terrible. Jays didn't score runners, score position to start it. You think, by the way, Texas Rangers home run. One nothing Rangers. We're getting close. If you're listening to this podcast, you know if the magic number is one. We don't. All right. So we're experiencing this right so now. What, live. Uh, I'm I'm kind of tuned out today as to what 
what we need to happen, what we want to happen. We just need the Mariners to lose. Mariners, Mariners lose. lose. Jay's uh, what, numbers one. Is the third wild card looking? It's looking out of touch. <laughs> I think the Jays are going to Tropicana. And someone could be punching their steering wheel. I don't know if that's true. But listen, I, I'm pretty no, sure. Johnny, you're ta- I will say I ask you about the playoff race every day at work, and you know. Because listen, I saw I saw uh James, shout out James, by the way, on Twitter. The Jays magic number or the Jays percentage, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, if they if they if Mariners lose tonight is ninety nine point eight. So I'm pretty sure that makes the magic number one. I mean point two for the like so tomorrow we can get some little pop and bottles action, folks. Um but listen. Today's game, that's the game that set the tone for me, man. Backs against the wall, obviously get fucking embarrassed, but they came back and they put up a six spot, albeit against a dog shit pitcher, <laughs> against an absolute dog shit pitcher, but they that's what you do. But we got to give a tip of a cap to our guy, man. Fucking hound on the mound, 200 innings pitched. Believe the fourth Blue Jay to ever do that. And did he not only pitch 12 innings? He went seven and two thirds, five hits, zero earned runs, 12 goddamn punchies. Tonight. Yeah, I thought my 12. eyes I thought my eyes were deceiving me when he had that last one. Like 12, 12 holy shit. 16 and 8 on the year. 16 and 8. Cy Young numbers. Well, dude, I would love to know his numbers. We take we take out that first start. That first start where he gave up a seven spot. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Was that bad? Well, wow, no, really let me bad. scroll back all the way to his first games. Stupid app. But he, uh, I'm pretty sure someone calculated this. His last 30 starts, he has a 2.75 ERA, I want to say. If that's correct or not, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. So we were told this guy couldn't pitch Avery. We were told he couldn't pitch when it mattered. That's what Mets fans told us. He's only He's pitched, pitched his what? last two starts, zero runs in each starts. And I think zero before that, too. Like, this guy is showing the fuck up, and you love to see it because he's a well, he guy. Have the five earned run stinker against Texas, but everyone had a stinker against Texas. Yeah, that was when Texas was on the Lynn Sanity run, though, Wave. Yep, they were. But they were. Chris Bassett, man, I tip my cap to you, man. What a signing by Ross Atkins. And and the thing about Chris Bassett, which makes him so good, Avery, is the way that he pitches, there's a lot of longevity to it because he throws so many of this junk off-speed type of stuff, right? So you, he can get away with throwing like this in four years, three years down the road because he's not a velocity guy. He's a, he just he paints pic- he paints a picture for you in the strike zone. That's what he does. Throws he does 69 paint. mile an hour curveballs. So c- congratulations to Chris Bassett, our guy. I was texting his brother Moose the entire game. Him and I always text when he starts, and the, the family was fired up. So, uh, And by the way, Chris Bassett followed all of us on Twitter this week. That was sick. I thought it was just one of those troll accounts like I always do, but I saw it. I was like, Chris Bassett followed us because it was after – we posted that video of me reacting to Sunday's win. And he must have saw that. And they, I don't know, Swanee liked the two and stuff like that. So they must have saw that and laughed about it in the change room or something like that. But uh, shout out to Chris for following us. And obviously, that's a guy that's going to be here for a while. So it's a good con, it's a good contact to have for the Gate 14 boys. I'm excited to hopefully do something with him in the offseason. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. But uh, let's go into the, I mean, the hitters. George Springer, three for five, albeit a lot of those were bloops. Bichette, two for four. Biggio, two for four. Thick Jesus, two for four. Matty Chopsticks, home run. Dalton Varsho, home run. The bottom of the order, man. I mean, uh, f- uh, four, five, six today had six hits combined between four, five, six. And Brandon Belt, I'll say it, one of the only guys on the team with over 800 OPS, he is a massive difference maker in this lineup, Avery, Brandon Belt. He really I is. I thought he was going to need some, some time. He kind of did, though. He struggled a little bit early, right? Before he came back, I mean, those first two games, he struggled a little Did bit. Did you see but... him pointing at the roof today? Yeah. He he just likes hitting with the roof closed, and Chris Bassett wanted the roof open. It's yeah. just an internal fight between everyone on the team. <laughs> it's so funny. But uh, the cock makes a massive difference, man. He really does. He works, every, like I said, we talk about this all the time. Every count he's in is 3-2. Every single motherfucking count is 3-2 that Chris Bassett is in. And Or sorry, did I say Chris Bassett? Yeah. I meant uh, the cock, um, Brandon our Bell. guy. The Brandon Belt, but uh, every county gets in, man. And and another good thing about him is he seems like I know we talk about this. Every guy on the team likes him. the The clubhouse seems cooler, more relaxed. You got a veteran guy, multiple World Series. He's probably talking to them, calming them down in the dugout, and that's going to be a massive factor in the playoffs because they didn't have that last year, right? In that eight to one win, eight to one uh, the blown lead they had. Who knows? Maybe Bassett says or uh, 
Belt says something in that clubhouse that changes the vibes a little bit or changes in the in the dugouts, change the vibes a little bit. Or John but, Schneider puts him in center field and he catches that ball. Yeah. You don't know. We never know. But um it just I, I love the cock being back and you love to see it. Someone's gonna clip me saying I love the cock, but whatever. But uh that Dalton Varsho home run, huh? That ball was fucking shot. His home runs rock. Yes, they, they fucking do. rock. They do. Every one of them rocks. Not many of them go oppo, but the ones that he pulls, they are fucking. They're he says yes to pull side home runs, yeah. right? Sell out for pull side power. You hate to see it. That's why he's our fucking guy. I mean, he's so good defensively. Where bunt just give, singles give me, and moon bombs. Give me twenty five home runs, bro. Just give me twenty five. What's home he runs. at? I think he's at like 19, 18 home runs. Yeah, but the best defense you could have in all of baseball. I guess we we'll, we can take that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But uh Bubble Biggio. Did you see that play he made today, Avery? No, I didn't. In the ninth inning, it was meanless. <laughs> kind of oh, I turned I nothing. turned the game I turned the game off in the top of the ninth. So ground ball to right. Calvin Biggio goes Superman dive, haul out, makes the play, guns Austin Wells at first. I couldn't believe my eyes. I uh, the the whole chat went absolutely bananas. Um, just rock star shit from Bubble Biggio. Rock star shit. You love to see he's it. He's going to start a playoff game. You think so? You think he's like a 3v1, 2v1? Or not 3v1, I guess, chops the, chops the chopsticks. But you think he's 2v1? Guaranteed? Yeah. yeah Which so. kind of played himself out of that. Yep. I agree. He has no problem. Like... Which sucks. But it's it's the best. It's the playoffs. You play your big dogs. You play the best guys up. And Biggio's so good defensively now and hitting so well. I don't know how you uh, put that other motherfucker. Dude, I kind of lo- Did you like the lineup construction today? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Chappie in the eight stick. Varsho in the nine. Kiermaier seven. But you think it. Chapman in the eight hole gets means more fastballs, but he can't hit those. <laughs> no, it doesn't. He actually doesn't want more fastballs. Yeah, That's no. his problem. We should hit he him. He's saying, what are you three- putting me in the eight hole? They're going to think I'm shit to give me fastballs. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll take it. if he can heat up again here at the end. That helps his team a ton, for sure, for sure. But other than that, not not a bad series. I know they lost two one. Face good pitching. Michael fa- King is a fucking freak. Yeah, I'll I say mean, they that. lost to two great pitchers. Exactly, and they beat the bad pitcher. So you're not going to have any negative shit for me on this one. No. But like I said, this episode is going to be short. Let's go to the uh, listener questions, Avery. If there's any. Okay, what happens first? Johnny wins an owner's box quiz or Chappie gets two hits in a game? Should we? I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, we'll say Chappie gets two hits in a game. I don't yeah. want to spoil anything for the people. But you should tune in to Sunday Trivia. Tune in, to sun, tune in to Sunday Trivia before you listen to Gate 14 this Sunday. Yes. The baseball one, World Series Trivia. Tune in. Uh, does David Schneider make the game one wildcard lineup if we no. make it? No, unfortunately, he's our guy, but it's just like, I mean, he hasn't playing they, him. You, yeah, you can't play him. You can't when play he, a guy you haven't played in weeks, which I don't get. They're really strict with him when he struggles. But when Chapman hits 140 since May, they just keep trotting that motherfucker out there. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't. It's crazy. Like they haven't played Schneider and it felt it feels like a year. It's yeah, they did that and they did that for two weeks before. And then it's like, OK, why didn't we why didn't we do that again? Yeah. It sucks, but I don't know. You got to play your best guys, and Kevin Biggio is making it hard to play anyone else right now, any utility guy. Kevin Biggio is making it very, very hard on this line, on this manager to do that. So whatever, but uh, what's the next one? Are you guys, us, are we going to do a full non-biased playoff prediction? Everything we do is non-biased. Yep. We're the most non-biased people uh, in the podcast game, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't care about the other teams. Like I, I, everyone asks us, like, what do you do once the Jays are eliminated? If they get eliminated, like, I just don't want to. Like, I guess we can cover the playoffs once a week. I guess, but I, I don't think I'm gonna be doing streams, playoff streams. You know? Yeah, it's like it's nice to watch baseball where you're not totally invested. Like you care to see good baseball, but and I don't think our viewers would show up to that. Like I don't think we'll have tons of viewers in a live stream if we're watching a like a playoff, like an NLCS game. Maybe if it was Bryson, but like maybe they'd watch. I can't get excited like I do for the Blue Jays. It yeah. Would be, it would be fake. Yeah, exactly. And we don't fake shit. No. Make that very clear. Uh, what, would, what would we do sacrifice for a playoff win? My future child? Yeah, I don't know if this is a series win or just win a game. 
Win a Re- game, no. I'm not sacrificing my future child, but I will sacrifice a lot for a fucking. I will sacrifice a lot. Yeah, I don't even know what I would say for that without saying some stupid answer that I don't actually believe in. Uh, do we want the Twins or Rays in the wild card series? Rays at this point, man. You think so? You think we met like Glasnow's a freak, but he's. He can't, he's wild. I mean, we saw that against him, though, you know? I don't know. At the end of the day, we're going against up against two good pitching staffs, okay? At the end yeah. of the day. And you think, uh, yeah, the Twins kind of seem to be getting hot, but then they, what, they lose to the Athletics 2-1 today. Not that the games matter anymore for them. Um, but, yeah, and if we get past the wild card, who would you rather play, the Orioles or the Rangers? Uh, Rangers, Rangers are the worst bullpen I've ever seen, but Jay's kind of got worked against them this year. They got worked against both those teams, so I don't know. I don't know who I'm picking. I I'm more scared of the Rangers' offense for some reason. Okay, those offense is great too. Let's not get that twisted. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. But I don't yeah. know. The Rangers just kind of like Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. I feel are better players than anyone. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would say the Orioles, based off the lack of experience they have, probably. All uh, right, um, this guy said he has a bad feeling that Cam Eaton's on the playoff roster over David Schneider. That's just that can't happen. No, right? <laughs> hey, come on, bro. Like, no. I'm pretty, he hasn't been up long enough for him to make the playoff roster. Right? I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he's eligible because yeah, so it was after September call up, so they'd have to announce an injury. Right, they'd have to announce an injury. Big up, Bland Lord. That that's not going to uh, going to happen, and that's all we got. Okay. Like I said, short podcast today. Let's go into the weekend preview here. I say the Jays with the Rays have nothing to play for. I'm gonna we're gonna keep it rolling. Jays lose two out of three. We're gonna keep it rolling. We're gonna keep reverse jigsing this team. So Jays lose two out of three this weekend. Yeah, Jays lose two of three. I I, I think we gotta plan this live on the podcast right here, Avery. How are we gonna celebrate this clinch? We're not gonna be able to be together. We're not gonna be on stream. Uh we gotta, I think we gotta just should I stone cold beers in my suit? You should sto- you should stone cold beers. Yes. Because it'll be late at night when they do this. Because they got to wait till after the uh, D-backs play or the uh, Mariners play. So it will be a late at night game. Yeah. Uh, I'll do that as well. I will do that as well in Alto's apartment. At the <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, man. Folks, we're close. Three. D- I. Oh, my God. I was talking about being in St. Louis with my, my buddies here today. Feels like yesterday. It really does feel like yesterday. I'm so, it really I'm, does. I'm, I'm sad. Yeah. I'm sad. But uh, as we always, might, we guys, might have man, six listen. more games left. Really? We might have five games left. Stop. Stop. Sorry. That makes me miserable. Uh, but as always, man, uh, listen, I know this isn't the year being over yet, obviously, but uh, I just want to obviously before we do our last podcast, uh, whenever that is, love you guys, man. Support's been crazy. This is. I know we'll, we'll do like a end of year podcast, I guess, but I'll save it for that. But this has been one of the craziest years of my life, personally, just based off of the amount of traction. I mean, Avery's getting pictures taken of him when he's with his dad. Um, it's just <laughs> the crazy, the it's crazy game, how fast yeah. it's grown. And uh, we're not done yet. You thought the content was good in the season? Wait till the postseason, folks. Everyday podcast. So stay tuned for that. Love you guys, man. Gate 14 forever. Let's clinch a goddamn playoff spot. Love you guys.